Hello, everybody, and welcome to MME 2305, Material Energy Balances. Uh, today, I'm going to go over a topic, and uh, it's whether or not a system closes, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. And uh, I've titled the, this lecture, Does It Close? An apt title. Uh, we have done um, systems, our, our excuse me, we've done energy balance problems. Um, we did one for an electric arc furnace and we assumed there was no heat uh, left from the system. And we assumed that all the energy generated by these electrodes went into the, um, the material basically, went into the metal to heat it up. And we said this was essentially a closed system. Um, in reality, things are a little bit more complex um, you know, when you open these doors, you can have heat loss. And, and we had a kind of a problem set problem where we, we tried to figure out the heat loss. And uh, if, you've, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, go look on Blackboard and there's, there's a problem set along with the solution um, if you're interested. Um, in reality, though, uh, systems are much more complex. Um, you can have chemical reactions. Um, you know, here we're combusting methane and uh, we're having uh, you know this combustion product so there's going to be a heat of reaction associated with this sometimes we have excess air that kind of thing uh, so things are a little bit more um, more complex and i want to talk about uh, when a system closes and we say a system closes when the sum of delta h is equal to zero and to kind of illustrate this, uh, let's go through a problem. There's a little bit of complexities to this one pertaining to the mass balance. And I kind of thought it would be a good idea to show you a slightly more complex uh, material balance than we've done in the past. And, uh, and I probably uh, will explain it a little bit. Um, so we have this equation where we're reducing iron oxide, uh, the iron oxide or hematite uh, by adding um, carbon monoxide. Uh, this, I believe this process is called roasting. And uh, the byproduct of that is CO2 and pure iron. And if you notice, the oxide and the iron are both in the reactive state. Um, that's because the reaction is occurring at 1200K. Um, so I can read you the problem. Um, all compositions are in volume fraction. I kind of reiterated that in the, uh, in the problem as well. A uh, reactor has two input streams, hematite at 600K and a reduction gas of 96% by volume, uh, carbon monoxide and the balanced carbon dioxide, uh, which enters the reactor at 1300 Kelvin. Uh, there are two exit streams, both at 1200 Kelvin, pure iron and another stream of, of off gas uh, which is 75% carbon monoxide and the balance of carbon dioxide, and excuse my subscript. Um, assuming the heat loss for this project uh, process, excuse me, is 11 kilojoules per mole of hematite reduced, uh, determine if this system closes. And I've given you a little hint here. Uh, we wanna first find the number of moles of carbon monoxide entering the furnace. Um, if we look, we haven't done this in a little while. A uh, flow chart is always very nice, and uh, I tend to get away from it sometimes when I do these energy balances, but the flow chart still is an important tool. And um, so, and I kind of wanted to point out the gas and, and crystal because uh, we're going to be using the thermodynamic tables to solve this problem. Uh, we have 96% uh, carbon monoxide, so that means the rest is carbon dioxide. And then we have this exit stream of 75% carbon monoxide and 25% carbon dioxide. Um, our hematite's coming in at uh, um, 600 Kelvin. Uh, we don't really have a basis, but we do have something pertaining to mole. And then we have uh, something interesting with this gas composition here. And um, um, the equation is chemical reactions going on within the furnace. So we have carbon monoxide reacting with hematite, uh, yielding carbon dioxide and iron, and uh, that's coming out at 1200K. So we have this exit stream uh, both coming out at 1200K. Uh, we don't have uh, much else um, in the way of information. 
Um, the other thing we have is that we're having a heat loss of uh, 11,000 joules per mole of hematite produced. Um, here are the tables uh, that we care about. So we have carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and uh, hematite. These are all generated by the uh, altered freed uh, table that I've placed for everyone on Blackboard, the Excel generator. And I, I could put the um, iron table here, but just to kind of save space and, and kind of reiterate, the heat of formation for iron at 1200 K is zero. It's still the standard state. Iron is a solid at 1200 K. And um, so uh, we take the heat of formation to be zero. Um, something that will come back later on in this problem is uh, heat and en energy across the system boundaries in two ways. And so this is kind of uh, tying back to one of the first um, presentations we had on energy balances in this class. And uh, we said heat and work um, are how energy crosses systems. And so heat, um, if it's going into the system, it's considered positive. If it's leaving the system, it's considered negative. And work is the opposite, it's vice versa. So if work is being done to the system, it's negative. It's, if it's being done by the system, it's denoted as positive. So don't forget that. Um, kind of giving it away a little bit, but uh, let's ignore this part right here, I'm sorry. Um, the hint was to first calculate the number of moles of carbon monoxide entering the furnace. And to kind of eliminate what I think is confusing about this particular problem, we have this chemical equation, right? And we're saying that we're, we're dealing with one mole of hematite. But this problem also gave us something else. It gave us um, composition of the input gas stream and the exit gas stream. So that changes things a little bit. So that's why I threw this hint in here uh, to calculate the number of moles of carbon monoxide entering the furnace. And um, we have to do a material balance, and I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more because it's a bit different than the others we've had, okay? And, and uh, I, I uh, will explain it now. Um, we can do a carbon monoxide balance, and so we have two sources of information. So we have our chemical equation, and we have our input-output gas compositions. And uh, we also want to note that mole percent equals volume percent. I think sometimes I say at STP, um, but if it's an ideal gas, mole percent equals volume percent. And I know we're at an elevated temperature, we're not at STP, but mole percent is, is still going to equal volume percent. Um, so based on this chemical equation, we can say the number of moles of carbon monoxide out equals the number of moles of carbon monoxide in minus three. And for CO2, since we're doing a carbon monoxide balance, we can also do a CO2 balance. Uh, we can say the number of moles of CO2 out equals the number of moles of CO2 in plus three. And this one's a little bit more straightforward to, to understand in this statement, um, but the number of moles of CO2 out we have three moles in the chemical equation, so we know we're generating um, three moles of CO2, okay? But we also had an input gas composition, so we know that 0.4%, um, excuse me, 4%, we know that 4% of the CO2 in this output stream is uh, from um, the input stream, okay? Because the CO2 didn't react with the Fe2O3, only the CO did. Um, kind of coming back here now, we've, we've said that. So the number of moles of CO2 out equals the number of moles CO2, sorry, CO in minus three. So we have three moles of CO in. Uh, we know that some of it's gonna be consumed by um, this um, equation. So we know that three moles of the carbon monoxide are gonna be consumed due to this chemical reaction. So whatever other carbon monoxide came in um, is gonna, we're gonna lose part of it due to this chemical reaction. So we're gonna, use, we're gonna lose three moles exactly. Okay, so the number of moles of CO out that we find in that output stream is going to be the number of moles of CO in minus three moles, basically. 
Um, so our input gas, we want to remember, and I put it in terms of decimal point. So the volume fraction of CO is 0.96, and the volume fraction of CO2 is, is 0.04. For the output gas, the volume fraction of CO is 0.75, and uh, the volume fraction of CO2 is 0.25. And again, remember, mole fraction equals volume fraction in this case. Um, so from the information we have, so we can do it in terms of carbon. Um, for CO2, the output gas, you have 0.21 moles of carbon came from the reaction, and 0.04 moles came from the input stream. And for carbon monoxide, 0.75 moles of carbon were unreacted and 2.1 moles of carbon were reacted with hematite to form the CO2. So our 0.21 balances out. Okay, that's actually kind of good, right? Because 0.96 minus 0.75 gives us 0.21. Um, and so that's how we can set up these ratios. I kind of gave one away here, but we'll start talking about it in a bit. Um, so moles unreacted equals moles unreacted. So three moles of CON over 0.21 equals n moles of CO out over 0.75. So this, this ratio is set up from moles unreacted um, equaling moles unreacted. And the number of moles of CO2 out, oh, sorry, CO, carbon monoxide out equals 10.71 moles, okay, based on the input output composition difference. Um, so now we, from this statement here, the number of moles of CO out equals the number of moles of carbon monoxide in minus three. Uh, we can figure out that the number of moles of carbon monoxide that went into the system were 13.71 moles, okay? And three of them were consumed by the chemical reaction to make CO2. Um, CO2 now, so three moles of CO2 out over 0.21 equals um, the number of moles of CO2 in over 0.04. Um, we know now, based solving this ratio, that the number of moles of CO2 in equals 0.52 moles. Uh, based on the statement we wrote here, um, the number of moles of CO2 out equals the number of moles of CO2 in plus three. And that gives us um, a number of moles of, um, C of, of CO2 coming out equaling 3.52 moles. And so, what becomes important are um, the input and output. And, um, and also, um, well, that's it. So the, the input stream is actually what becomes important. And we'll see why um, here when we start calculating the heats. So these input numbers are the ones we're actually interested in. I kind of just solve this for com completeness. So now we've figured out the number of moles and the number of moles comes into handy when we're doing some of these um, calculations and uh, hopefully I can explain it in a way that's clear for everybody. Um, so delta H1, um, that's raising one mole of hematite um, from 600 Kelvin to 1200 Kelvin and we're using our sensible heat tables. And if you're taking a look at your tables, you can kind of follow along and see where I got these values from. Uh, but we're using the tables. So first you have to cool it to 298K, uh, which is why I use negative um, 37,791 joules. And we're raising it up to 1200K, so it's positive. So 128,945 joules, uh, giving us a total of 91,154 joules. And you may be asking yourselves, how come you're not using joules per mole? Well, it's because we're saying we're doing this for one mole of hematite. Uh, the same is true for delta H2. So we're cooling the input gas from 1300 Kelvin to 1200 K. Um, our input moles are, are what becomes important now um, because the, CO, the rest of the CO2 is generated. So 0 0.52 moles of CO2, uh, we cooled it from 1300 Kelvin to 298 and then raised it from uh, 298 to 1200, so 50,153 uh, negative because we're cooling it, uh, plus uh, 44,484 because we're raising it back up to 1200 um, times the 0.52 moles of CO2. Um, based on the previous calculation, we figured out that we have 13.72 moles of CO, and uh, we had a lot of CO coming in, um, and that amount went down to 1200K. 
Okay, so we're assuming it cooled before the reaction here. So there's a little bit of assumptions that we have to make. So 13.72 moles uh, times the heat of cooling it from 1300 to 298 plus the heat of raising it to 28430, or sorry, raising it to 1200K. Um, so punch it in your calculator, I got 50,089 joules. Um, delta H3 is the heat of reaction. And we went to all that trouble to figure out the moles coming in and out, okay? And we figured out that we had 13.72 moles of uh, input gas, okay? And uh, by input gas, I mean CO, um, CO. And only three, but only three moles are reacted because we're using only one mole of hematite, okay? And so that's why uh, when we calculate it, um, you can kind of see my chicken scratch here. I use Tess's law and I got negative 35438 joules or negative 35,438 joules. Um, delta H4 is the heat loss. And so remember for an open system, delta H equals Q minus W. So there's no work being done here, only heat. Um, it's leaving the system. So you remember the slide I showed earlier where I showed the sign you apply to heat entering or leaving the system. The heat is leaving the system um, so a negative sign is applied. And so I got negative, uh, well, it was given to us, so negative 11,000 joules. So I said, a negative, I said a 11,000, or sorry, 11 kilojoules per mole of hematite reduced. So this was given to us. We just had to figure out the sign. Um, when you add them all together, I get a grand total of negative uh, 5,373 joules. So this means this system does not close. And uh, hopefully um, this was interesting. Uh, pay attention to kind of how I calculated the um, um, number of moles of carbon monoxide and number of moles of carbon uh, dioxide on the input and output streams uh, respectively. And um, I think you will be okay uh, with this kind of stuff. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me.